Hello, and my name is Mike Swiger. Today's passage is Philippians chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. Finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you is no trouble to me and is safe for you. Look out for the dogs, look out for the evildoers, look out for those who mutilate the flesh. For we are the circumcision who worship by the Spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh. In today's passage, Paul is passing from one topic to another, and in so doing, he repeats a very common exhortation, rejoice in the Lord. As we have previously shared, joy is the keynote of this epistle. Evidently, Paul had previously shared some of the same content with the Philippians. He may be referring to another letter he had written previously that had been lost, or maybe he had given these warnings to them in person. Whichever the case, he does not hesitate to repeat himself because he knows that the matter concerns their spiritual well-being. The need for repeated warnings, instructions, and admonitions is never old until the need for them has passed. Parents and preachers must often repeat themselves, even to the point of weariness, to themselves and to their hearers, because the threats and dangers they are warning against are ever-present. Paul goes on to warn his readers with a threefold reiteration of the phrase, look out. First, look out for the dogs. In the first century, the word dog was the term of reproach commonly used by the Jews to describe Gentiles. But since the Philippian congregation included Gentiles, the reference is most likely to unbelievers outside of the church. Secondly, Paul says, look out for evildoers. These are most likely false teachers or unbelievers who were members of the professing church and thereby threatening the health of the church from within. Thirdly, he warns them to look out for Judaizers. These were people who taught the Gentiles how to first follow all the Jewish laws and customs as a prerequisite to becoming a Christian. Paul occasionally utilized sarcasm in his writing, as he does here. He parodies the word for circumcision, which is here translated mutilators of the flesh. And the point that Paul is making is that outward rituals have no spiritual value unless they are accompanied by a genuine conversion of the heart. Christians who repent and place their faith in Jesus Christ are people who are spiritually circumcised, whether they are male or female, Jew or Gentile. This is not a physical cutting of the flesh, but an internal cleansing of the heart. Paul made this point very clear in the book of Romans when he wrote, For no one is a Jew who is one outwardly, nor is circumcision an outward or physical act. But a Jew is one inwardly, and circumcision is a matter of the heart, by the spirit and not by the letter. His praise is not from man, but from God. Rituals and ceremonies have their place in worship. They are tools that we should be using to lift our heads and our hearts up to Jesus Christ. However, when they are divorced from faith and love and become an object of adoration, they become dangerous and delusional. Paul goes on to give three evidences for those who are genuinely Christians, those who have been spiritually circumcised. First, they worship by the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit resides in them and expresses himself through them in leading them to live a life of worship. Secondly, they glory in the sacrifice of Christ Jesus as the grounds of their only acceptance with God, as opposed to those who glory in their own legalistic, works-oriented religion. And lastly, they put no confidence in the flesh. The term flesh is anything apart from Christ on which we build our hope for salvation. We cannot trust in ourselves or our own personal efforts to earn our way to heaven. Our confidence should be only in Christ, whose sacrifice on the cross and resurrection from the dead provides the only sure foundation of our faith. And thank you very much for sharing a few moments with me in the Word.